So in this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we are going to be importing a Vigilante asset, this missile launcher over here. Then we'll be setting it up so that it allows for some elevation of the missile launch bay so that our missiles could theoretically be launched out. We will then be putting some sockets and creating a spawn position for our missiles to spawn and then fire out with some Niagara effects and then track a homing target once they're up in the air and then try to hit it, which is in this case this circle here in the middle, which it can't really hit because of the angle and the forces that are involved, but it's at least trying. So, yeah, you are then able to shoot multiple missiles if you want to as well, so you can have a little bit of a war. And this is what we will be going to, through and creating in this tutorial today. So let us get started. First off, this is Unreal Engine version 5.2, and this is a blank project that we're making use of for this. And the first step that we're going to go through is to import some assets into this project. So the project assets we're going to be making use of is if you're typing in West MLRS, you'll get this free vigilante vehicle that you can download from the marketplace. Make sure to download that into your project. And other than that, we can also download something. If we type in missile, West missile M26, we'll find a missile that's available to us as well. Uh, so make sure to download this into your project also. Since the Vigilante missile, uh, well actually all of the Vigilante assets are not maintained uh, beyond version 4.27 I believe, uh, that means that you can't just add them to your project when you try to get your project it's not going to be showing anything that's uh, old, newer than 4.27. So to add them to a project that is older, sorry, newer than that, all you need to do is click show all projects and just click and add and then choose the lowest uh, compatible version that's available in our case that's 4.27 and it will just import the assets and that's all you need to do. Once you are adding the second uh, asset to your project you'll likely get a message saying that files from already exist in the project do you want to replace them in this case you choose yes the reason for this is there there might be some uh, components between the two different packs since they're both from Vigilante that are mutually used. Uh, if you're having issues with adding it from this part, uh, make sure to close down your project and then try to add the assets to your uh, project while it is not uh, locked in a uh, right locked state and that should allow you to add the assets. So back in our project now, you can see that we have this Vigilante content folder and in it we have a projectiles folder where we have our missile that we added and we have a vehicles folder where our West MLRS uh, has been added. Now, first thing we want to do is just clean this up a little bit. So we'll create a folder called this uh, missile launch or something like that. And this is where we will put our files. So in this case, we're going to go into the projectiles folder first here, and we can see that we have two different blueprints. These two that are blue here are blueprints. One is called uh, underscore showcase and end, and one is just called M26. What we'll do is we'll uh, duplicate the, the one that doesn't say showcase. We can take the default name for now and then drag it into our missile launch folder. And then we do the same for the vehicles. So there's one that's called just M22, sorry, M270, and one that's called showcase in the end. We'll duplicate one that's not a showcase, and we'll drag it into our missile launch folder. And the reason we do that is just simply so that we don't actually affect any of the assets that we imported initially. So you always have something to go back to if you're running into some kind of issue, I guess. Uh, so anyway, this one has now been renamed M27 because Unreal Engine uh, adds an increment into the end to um, give it a unique uh, identifier. And this one has become 271 instead of 270. So that's something to keep track of. But these are the two assets that we're going to be playing around with a little bit now. So let us start working on our vehicle with we'll double click on it. And this is the place where we will be adding some logic. So in this blueprint here, we can see that there are a bunch of stuff already. It's mostly animation related for the showcasing of the vehicle itself. Uh, going to our begin play event, we're going to be enabling input here. And the reason for that is we're not actually going to be possessing this like a normal pawn. We just want to interact with this vehicle. So if we do a right click and get player controller, index zero, uh, then we're going to get the player controller that we are. 
we can say enable input and executing this will now allow this vehicle to listen to this controller for inputs so even though we're not controlling it it's still going to be acting to our commands so if we do now a keyboard and uh, the one key for example we can have something execute here and uh, what we want to do is just to have some basic functionality we want to have the missile battery on the, the vehicle itself uh, go up uh, tilt if you want so we, that we can actually fire a missile and we want to add some functionality to actually fire a missile so we can add another keyboard event um, keyboard two like so so one will be for raising the missile rack and one will be for actually firing a missile okay now uh, let's start with the missile for now so uh, spawning our missile is going to be fairly simple we drag out pressed we say spawn uh, class we can have a spawn actor from class and the actor that we want to spawn is going to be the one that says BP M27 because our missile got renamed. So BP M27 will be the missile and we split the strut for the transform. And now we will essentially be uh, spawning. The first thing that we run into here is we don't know where to spawn. We want to spawn somewhere in our missile rack, but we don't exactly know where. So we're going to be um, exploring that a little bit now. So each of these Vigilant vehicles is consisting of a skeletal mesh. So if we go up here in our components folder, we can see that, or hierarchy, we can see our, we have a skeletal mesh here. And by uh, actually, this doesn't look right. Skeletal mesh asset here is blank. It should not be blank. It seems like it does not manage to get its skeletal mesh with it weird anyway let's go to our folder over here and here we can see our skeletal mesh uh, let's just drag that in here and then we uh, open it up anyway so here we have our skeletal mesh and inside of here we have all the different bones that uh, this vehicle is consisting of that are allowing us to manipulate it in different ways. Uh, what we're going to be doing is we're going to find something called the rocket launcher rotation interior here, or I'm assuming that's what it means. You can see that it's a, a point over here, a bone, and it has the right direction. It's facing forward. It's maybe a little bit uh, low in form of the battery, uh, but that's fine. Uh, we can use this as a start point. There might be some bone here that's better for this, but this will do for now, uh, for me anyway. You can add another one if you want to or use another one. So we're gonna add a socket here on the rocket launcher. We're gonna rename it. We're gonna be calling it like uh, missile launcher, something like that. So now we have a, a new position in our uh, geometry that we can make use of. So using uh, our relative location here, we can actually reposition this. So if we were to say 100X, uh, we can see that actually, that's maybe good. It's a little bit forward now and maybe a little bit in the Z axis, 75, something like that. Seems to be a sort of in the middle. This might be good. So this is what I'm going to be making use of essentially. Uh, the point of uh, making the socket is now that we can go back to our uh, blueprint and we can say we want to add a scene component and this scene component we can then say that it's supposed to have a parent socket and we can choose the missile launcher socket, which means that we can now use this location for this scene component as our uh, ejection point for launching missiles. So compiling, saving, going to our event graph, we can now drag our scene component. Maybe we should name this to something like uh, missile launch um, start or something like that. So this is where we will be actually launching from and uh, by getting the transform of this let's even type in world transform make it a little bit happier uh, so now if we get the, the world transform from this we can use this as our uh, position for location rotation and spawn uh, scale so it should be uh, adjusting all of these values as we need them to. So uh, recombining this into a struct, we can 
rehook the transform like so. So that's the first step. Uh, the next thing is that this missile doesn't actually do anything, but the missile will come back to later. So let's start working on the part over here, which is going to be our missile launcher rack actually moving it and putting itself into position. If you look around in the blueprint, you can find that there are a bunch of different things that you can make use of here. It's like uh, skin types, light emissives, wheel smokes. Uh, you can see here there's roofs and hatches and here we can actually see a rocket launcher rotation so this is pretty much what we're looking to do right so if we just copy this so we don't have to redo it over up here we can just drag up to where we want it and we can say we want to set our rocket uh, launcher hor horizontal actually not that doesn't sound right horizontal rotation is wrong that should mean it uh, swivels what we want is something called elevation. Yes, we want elevation. So we'll copy these. We go up here. And so this is the value that we want to somehow uh, interact with. To make this uh, nice fluid and all of that stuff, we can just right click and do a add a timeline. So then we can have a elevated, elevate, rocket battery we can call it the timeline and then we say when we press we're supposed to be playing it and when we update it we're sending the information in here now we just need to have a value out here this currently doesn't give you other value so we double click into it and say we want to add a track we want to add a float track we right click somewhere add a key right click somewhere else and add another key so we have two keys Go to the first one, click on it, say that we won't have time zero and we won't have value zero. This means at time zero, it will have a multiplier of zero to whatever we want to have. In the case for the second one, we can say that after two, which would represent two seconds, we should have a value of one. Uh, since our track now consists of two points that exist within two seconds, we'll make sure to make the length of the track also two seconds in this case. So compiling and saving, and now going back to our uh, graph, we can see we have a new track zero here, which we can hook up to our rocket launcher elevation. Uh, going back in here, we can actually name this something better. So we click up here and press F2 and call this um, elevation percent. Uh, the reason we call it this is that this uh, specific uh, elevation here will take a zero as a minimum value and one as a maximum value to get its maximum elevation angle so that's why we want to have a one value as our final location or final elevation rotation whatever you want to call it uh, of course you don't need to use that you could have something else like 0 0.65 or something it will be two thirds up completely up to you uh, but that's how this one is set up anyway so uh, doing this now should hopefully give us our rocket elevate elevation here. So let's actually try this out at once. So we'll go out and we'll take our uh, missile launch, our truck that we have from our edited folder, our missile launch folder. We'll press play. And if we press one now, we should see that the missile rack is elevating up. So that's all good and fine. So that actually works now. So that's the first step. Going back to into our uh, blueprint again, we want to continue working on uh, our missile now. As it stands currently, our missile is being spawned when we press the two keys. So if we were to go in here and actually go press one key to uh, raise the elevation of our track and then press two, we should, okay, we actually see it getting spawned there. This is not right. We're supposed to be having the transform of the rack. So this means that if we close and go to our skeletal mesh again, um, we can find our uh, missile launcher here and what we're probably rocket launcher rays. If we drag the socket from rocket launcher rotation int to rocket launcher rays int instead, it looks to be a decent position. Let's just check this out and we erase it again and we press the two key. We can see that nothing is being spawned. If we however do this and raise and spawn it in the middle, 
we can see that actually if we spawn during the transition is what I mean we can see that we can actually see the rocket at the, the elevation that it had while it was moving so now it is spawning at the elevation of the, the same elevation as the rocket battery at least so that's a good start but now we need to tweak the, the actual missile itself let's open up that asset inside of this asset we also have some logic here it's mostly about saving the the animation instance and allowing it to be uh, updating fins and some uh, animations and uh, uh, effects when, when it's moving. What we're going to be doing is this. As a first step we're going to be setting a timer and this will be our timer that uh, enables a guiding system. So right click set timer uh, by event and we'll hook that up and we'll say after what one second uh, we want something to happen so we drag out the event and say add event add custom event and let's say start guidance system so at this point we want to say the missile should be uh, starting to use its guidance system now what does this mean? Well, uh, we want this to be a projectile, so we want to add a component and type in projectile. Projectile movement, add that. Our projectile movement here can be a homing missile, and we want this to be a homing missile. So if we go over here to our properties, we have over here we have a homing category. So we want to set it to be a homing projectile. We can set a magnitude here, like 3000 or something like that. This will be how uh, intensely it will be trying to find or follow its uh, target. Uh, and this will be its starting location. But if you drag out from the projectile movement and you say set homing, you'll get a set homing target component. Now what this is, it's going to be having a scene component in the world which it will be using as its homing target. So this could be some, some subsystem on a spaceship or some specific part in a building or something like that. So it's going to be making use of a scene component. So we can promote this to variable and this will be our homing target component. So that's pretty aptly named. So that's the thing that we want to do when the guidance system starts, which happens after one second. However, we can still have our a missile be moving before then and you do that by having an initial speed so if you have something like 3000 then it will be moving 3000 in the x-axis if you look over here you can see that that's the way the uh, missile is pointing if you see down here you can see that, that that's the x-axis uh, so that would be its initial velocity in that direction so if we were to try and actually do this now we actually will have a missile uh, projected component and when we press the two key we can actually see that the missile itself is flying away and it's landing over there. It doesn't behave very much like a missile currently but it's a start at least and that's something. So going back to our missile again. Now to have the missile actually follow our target we will be using a target dummy in this case. So in our folder we'll right click and create a blueprint class of the type actor we will call it bp underscore uh, target dummy this will be what our missile will be trying to track and to do this we will be adding first of all we'll be adding a billboard and this is just to make sure that we can see it easily in the world the billboard will change the uh, render here to be the texture to be something i think we have target yes target icon and then i think we have a setting called hidden which is set to hidden in game, we want that to be false so we can actually see it. So this will be what it looks like in the world, so we can see it. We'll drag the billboard over the scene component and replace it, compile and save. And here is the, the target dummy. So going back to our world, we can now drag this target dummy out somewhere in the world and we'll see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like currently. Now, if we were to play, we can see that the target dummy is there and we can uh, raise our elevation of a rocket battery and we can shoot our missile but nothing is really happening because we're currently not hooking these two together they're not actually interacting yet so to do this we'll go to our missile and actually not our missile we'll go to our 
we'll go to our, uh, what's it called, missile launcher. And we'll say that, okay, um, this missile launcher vehicle should have a target. Uh, let's call it a homing target. This can be of any type that's like an actor, for example. Like so. And we want to uh, expose this so it's a variable uh, instance that we can choose, which means that if we go out here now, we can choose our vehicle, we can scroll down, we can say that the homing target is here, it's set to none. We can choose from a list, which is all the actors in the world, or we can use the pipet to actually click and choose the target dummy. So we can see that the target dummy is now its target. So the missile launcher knows about its target, it wants to shoot this target, and uh, the missile needs to be informed about this. To do this, we'll go back to our missile shortly. We'll go and find our homing target component. This one we want to make instance editable and expose and spawn so that we can tell it when we create it that you're supposed to have this homing target. Going back to our missile launcher now, we can right click and refresh the node and see that we now have a homing target component. Now, this homing target over here is an actor. An actor is not a scene component. However, our missile or sorry, target dummy, which will be the homing target, does have scene components in the form of a billboard here. So it's the roots of the, uh, the actor itself. Uh, so dragging up from that, we can say get component by class. It will get the first type of this class uh, scene component that it finds. In our case, we only have one. So scene component like so, it will get the first scene component and that should be its root location, and we now have a scene component for the missile to make use of. If we go back to our missile again now, we should actually get the missile to follow the target a little bit. Yeah, there we see. So it's sort of trying to reach it, but it overshot, overshot because it had a lot of momentum and such. So one of the things that we need to fix is our projectile movement has a behavior of being completely stationary. We want it to move its rotation in accordance to its actual velocity in the world. I do believe velocity, rotation follows velocity will make this look like it's actually parabolic in its nature, not just some stick that's flying through the air. So if we shoot now, you can see that the missile is actually bending towards where it's actually heading. So that looks a little bit better. Uh, and the reason you can see the second missile firing is not because uh, it's because the missile actually is going around under the, the ground and then coming back up again. Uh, going back into the missile again, <clears throat> closing this out like so. Let us add some visual flair to this missile now. So uh, this missile already has uh, visual effects um, put into it. So if we go here to a thruster, we can see that we have a Niagara system going. Uh, if we press on the magnifying glass by the folder, we can actually see where that one is. Let's create a duplicate of this one. And the reason for this is I just want to make something that um, I, I named it underscore smoke in the end. Uh, we're essentially going to be taking this uh, Niagara system that exists here, which consists of a few different parts to create this effect over here. And we're going to be disabling all of the different parts here except for the jet smoke one which gives us this effect and saving that and closing that down we can now go back to our missile and say something along the lines of uh, spawn system attached and we'll do it like this let's call it make a custom event uh, let's call it uh, start uh, missile ejection Something like that. We'll make sure to choose our asset over here. So we need to have the one that we called smoke, like so. And it needs to be an attached to a component. And we're going to be using our thruster FX because that's where the existing one exists. And yeah, that, that's pretty much it. So now, hopefully, if we spawn this, let's make another and let's do it like this. Let's call here start missile ejection. The order here might be dumb because you start ejection after you start the guidance, but 
Hmm, let's let, let's do that. that's actually like like this. We do this. Uh, let's create another set timer by event, and let's make this one. Well, not immediate, but zero point one then. So it'll be sort of our uh, ejection from the the missile launcher, uh, throwing the missile out of the, the the battery. So let's see how that looks. So we raise the battery and we launch. So we get some kind of uh, uh, plumage from the missile itself there. Now, uh, in addition to that, we also want to have when our guidance system kicks in, we want to stop this because this is supposed to be a, a, an effect only for the launch. Um, so let's promote this to a variable and call it, uh, let's call this variable smoke the fx and by taking the smoke vfx reference then we can say that when our ignition guidance system starts we can actually uh, set this active to false which means that this system will no longer be active once we reach this point so let's try that out quickly so now we're launching firing a missile and we get some plumage in the beginning and then not after that. The reason we're doing this is because once we actually reach the point where the ignition, the guidance starts, we want to have sort of a beefier effect. So this is where we want to actually ignite the regular effect. So getting into the thruster here, which actually has the Niagara system attached to it already, we can do set active on that one and set that to true and we can set it to reset, meaning that this system will now activate at that point. So again, elevating, firing some plumage. Okay, that chopped a little bit. Let's see if it happens again, or if I just get a frame drop and that's the issue. Okay, so that looks much better. So you can sort of see the, the fire kicks in. It was probably shaders not being compiled. So you can see the fire actually kicking in once it gets to a certain point and the the continuousness of the smoke looks good as well and even we don't have to restart between each of these things we can actually continuously fire new missiles from our missile launcher as well here and just have a bunch of them going around trying to hit the target now of course it's not hitting the target and that's because it has a certain momentum and it, it tries to redirect from that, but if, if its uh, velocity and inertia will not allow it to hit, it will overshoot. But you can see that given enough times, the missiles will eventually reach the target. Anyway, so there we go. So now we have set up something pretty cool there. And let's actually make sure that when the system or the missile hits the ground, uh, it actually explodes. Um, how we will do this is by first going to our missile and checking its skeletal mesh. Currently it, it's so weird that it uh, breaks the connection here. But uh, anyway, um, if we go down to do, 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 collision presets over here, you can see that we currently have no collisions. And that's not great if we want to detect actually hitting the ground. So we want to change this to something else. And in our case, we're going to change it to custom. And by default, we're going to be getting these settings. What we will be doing is we'll be changing the, let's see, we'll change world dynamic to overlap and we'll change vehicle to ignore, I think. So the idea here is that vehicle is supposed to be our vehicle itself. So we don't want it to interact collision wise. And we want to have a simulate generates simulation generates hit so we get a hit event if we actually hit the ground and doing that and then going to our vehicle and then going to its skeletal mesh we can go and say that it should have the collision presets of instead of uh, let's see here is this the right one I do believe that this, no, there we go. Okay, so we go custom here and we say that the object type here is supposed to be vehicle. So this one will be considered a vehicle now. Um, 
world dynamic overlap, I think, also, so that it doesn't interact with the missile. I do believe I got this right. Let's see what it looks like. So we fire, the missile goes out fine, it hits the ground, it goes through the ground. That's not optimal. Let's see what we can do about that. So we go back to the missile collisions again. So our missile, we want to be considered world dynamic, so the object type here will be changing to world dynamic, so it overlaps with the, uh, the vehicle fine. Uh, and, and doesn't have any other interactions if we were to build upon this further. Collision enabled, however, is set to no collision, which is not good for us. So we're going to set that to collision enabled query on physics and compile and save. And let's see how that looks. And there it goes. And there it hits the ground. Okay, so that's good. So it's stopping now from the ground. Excellent. And based on that, we should be able to go to our skeletal mesh and go and say is it on component hit? I do believe it is. Let's try that one and say print and it can say hello. So we elevate, we fire our missile, it hits the ground and it prints out hello. So now we have an event that triggers when the, the missile hits the ground. When the missile hits the ground is normally a good time for us to have an explosion. However, we don't have an explosion available in this pack as of now. So we will be going to add and add feature in content pack and go to content and choose a starter content pack. This will give us some basic things that are available like sounds and some effects like that. So one of the things that we get is actually an explosion. So if we go start the content and go explosion, we can see that we have a uh, cascade effect for that specifically here. So uh, let's actually add that then. We close this down, we go to our missile. We say that we want to spawn an emitter at location. Like so. And then we want to have actually this will work against our component, I think if we break this hit result, we can actually get the actual, yeah, I think so, there, that should be the correct location. And from here we can say that we want to make use of the P explosion. And let's up the scale a bit, maybe 10 by 10 by 10, so it's 10 times larger. We don't want it to auto destroy, I think. Um, let's see what that actually looks like to begin with. See if we got our scales right and such things. See if it looks good. See if it actually explodes where we want it to. So it's exploding where we do the detonation. So that, that looks okay. Uh, might, maybe the explosion is too small for that kind of missile. I don't know. But anyway, uh, what we can do now is that immediately when we spawn the emitter, we get our skeletal mesh and we say we set the visibility on this. And we say that the visibility should now be uh, false. This means that we immediately hide the missile so it has blown up essentially. Uh, directly after that, we can also take our thruster effects. And we can say that we want to set active for this one. And we set the active to false, meaning that we won't continue to send out our Niagara effects. And then based on this, we can also say that we want to set a lifespan. And let's say that we want to have something like, I don't know, five seconds, which means that this missile actor itself will self-destruct uh, five seconds after this event has happened. So what does this look like now? We elevate, we fire our missile, it launches, it tries to hit, it misses, it overshoots, it explodes, and it's gone. We see that the visual effect is playing around a little bit too, whoops, a little bit too long there. We seem to have a plumage uh, pretty much uh, after hitting. Now, the reason we want to deactivate this thruster effects and setting a lifespan here is because if we were to just uh, disconnect this and do a uh, destroy then we would be destroying this missile actor which would then destroy all of the different parts of it as well so if we were to run we can see that after firing the missile and then hitting the ground everything is immediately removed the, all the uh, trails and everything like that uh, 
You could work around this in a few different ways. Uh, you could, for example, uh, detach the uh, effects if you want to, uh, to have it uh, live separate from from the the rest of the actor and things like that. Could have the system spawn uh, and live as a, its own actor as well. Uh, what we're going to be doing, however, is we're going to be doing uh, what we want to do is we want to have the 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 fire trail of the missile be removed immediately once the explosion happens but we want the trail to stay until it the smoke dissipates um, the way we will be doing this is maybe a little bit hacky but it's the simplest way because of how this specific uh, niagara effect is set up we could have one that's uh, more aligned with how we want it to react so we could like edit it with some parameters and stuff like that but um, if we open it up we can see that what we have here, we have four different emitters that we're making use of. And if we remove the one that called Jet Smoke, we can see that we have all of the effects that make it uh, the, the fire, essentially. So uh, we're going to be making a duplicate out of this one. And we'll just be right clicking duplicate and we'll say Niagara System uh, Smoke or something like that. Uh, so in the Smoke one, we want to remove all the different parts except for the smoke so that means that we have the smoke and some some uh, smoky colored fire sorry fire colored smoke um, saving that we have our our smoke uh, system now and then we want to go into our uh, missile system which will be the fire and we deactivate the smoke from that one so we just have the fire now what we have essentially done is we have separated the two particle effects to be two separate entities by doing this, we can go into our missile again and we can make a duplicate out of that thruster. We can say that this is the uh, smoke effects. Maybe not exactly like that. Like so. And then for that, we'll make sure to pick the smoke here. So we have the Niagara system smoke. Um, this system now we want to have the same socket as the existing one so if we go here and click in the viewport we can see that it's at this socket over here called root into g socket we copy the name go to the smoke effects over here and we say we want to make use of the same root uh, like so that means that it should be positioning itself in a similar way to to this one so if we were to now go to our event graph and say uh, thruster effects. Now I've chosen some poor names here. Let's call this um, thruster smoke effects so that it's a little bit uh, more distinguished from the smoke effects that we created earlier. So we'll just drag out this one and we'll say set active, <clears throat> like so. Set it active, set it to reset. And if we are now going to fire this, it should hopefully look the same. Um, yeah, it should look the same. So we get the smoke trail, so we get the explosion and, and the fire is already here. So if we now go here to the missile and say, instead of uh, uh, setting this to inactive, we just uh, say destroy component. And this should be a much harsher way of handling the... Actually, let's do it like this and disconnect that and say... <clears throat> we still want to deactivate the smoke trails. So the thrust the smoke here, we go and we hook that up in here. <clears throat> so, by save and then fire so that looks much better we don't see any residual effects uh, going around there so uh, yeah so we, we can just continuously fire missiles here if we want to now and it will look uh, decent um so yeah that's 
pretty much all the different aspects that uh, this tutorial was meant to cover. Uh, you can always, of course, build upon this further. You could have something like we want to hit something and then destroy something and then have something break down into parts, maybe with the chaos system and stuff like that. Maybe I'll do a tutorial on that in the future. But for now, this is all that we were going to go through. Hopefully this was valuable. Uh, keep on learning. Take care. A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos, or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from.